In this video, we are going to talk about pivot tables. Excel pivots are a very useful and powerful feature of MS Excel. They can be used to summarize, analyze, explore, and present your data. In plain English, if I were to put it, you can take the sales data with columns like salesperson, order amount, and order date, and use pivot tables to quickly show total sales generated by each salesperson in every quarter. Excel sheets are static when it comes to rearranging data on the page. Pivot tables are a great tool for dynamically arranging, sorting, filtering data in worksheets. You might think of pivot tables as a user-created summary table of your original spreadsheet. You create the table by defining which fields to view and how the information should be displayed. Based on your field selections, Excel organizes the data so you see a different view of your data. The problem is people believe creating pivot table is difficult to learn, but I am positive after watching this video, a certain level of comfort can be achieved with pivot table and you can start data crunching. The data in the worksheet should be arranged such that each column should start with a heading and rows should contain related data. Based on this, pivot tables can be created such that data can be reorganized and filtered on the fly. If rows and columns structures are well defined, relationship between data can be maintained. It is not necessary to sort data in any kind of order, like in subtotals. For subtotals, you can visit our other videos. Pivots can be formatted as per user requirements so that it is more comprehensible. Pivots can be used to filter data. There are multiple ways of filtering pivots. One is through drop downs, and the other is through slicers. Users have to select the columns which they would like to slice the data. Only those slicers will appear on the screen so that users can specify the field. Other useful features covered in this video are group fields and calculated fields. And formatting. Calculated field is used to create pre-calculated variable. Calculated item is a new item in a row or column where the item's values are generated by a custom formula. Group field groups or segments data in a predefined format such as month, quarter, week, or minutes or seconds based on user specification. Just like pivot tables, pivot charts are dynamic tools. This feature can be used to manipulate, filter, and sort charts. We'll look at pivot charts in our next video. Now let's try and understand pivot table structure. Two, two new tabs are available once pivot table option is inserted the option tab and design tab. Main and areas of pivot table consists of pivot table field list, the lower or right quadrants and the result area. Pivot table field list section appears in the top right displaying the fields in your spreadsheet. You may check a field or drag it to a quadrant in the lower portion. The lower right quadrant area defines where and how the data shows on your pivot table. You have the option to display a field in either a column or row. You may also indicate if the information should be counted, summed, averaged, filtered, and so on. The black outline area to the left is the result of your selections from the previous two sections, pivot table field list and the right quadrants. Now let's look at an example to better understand this. Let's say you would like to create a pivot table out of this data depicting quarter-wise sales generated by each salesperson and country as a global filter. Go ahead and select this entire data set. Go to the Insert tab. Under Tables, go ahead and click on Pivot Table drop-down. Select Pivot Table from there. You can see you have various options available here. The first option is where is the data? Where is the existing data? You can go ahead and select an external data source if your data does not exist in Excel and choose a connection for that. The other option is where you would like the pivot table to go. If you would like it to exist in a new worksheet, you can select new worksheet. Or if you would like it to go in the existing worksheet, you can select existing worksheet and specify the location, which is the cell where you would like the pivot table to begin. We are going to go ahead and select New Worksheet because we want it to exist in a new worksheet and click OK. Pivot table options are available in a new worksheet for us now. Go ahead and select Country. 
we want country to appear as a global filter or a report filter. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it up to report filter instead of row label. There are multiple ways of doing this. I could have also selected this drop down and selected move to report filter or move to row labels, move to column labels. Now I'm going to go ahead and select salesperson, order date, and order amount. I want salesperson to appear under order date because I want to see quarter wise data. But as you can see right now our entire data is appearing day wise. Go ahead and click on any of the date cells and then go to the options tab and then go ahead and click on group. Under group, you have something called group fields. Go ahead and click that. Another window will pop up. You can see these are the various options in which date can appear. I'm going to go ahead and click on quarters, unselect month, and then I'm going to click OK. Here, it's as simple as this. My quarter wise data has appeared. Now, let's say I want to change the column name to order amount dollars. Go ahead and click on this column header. Go to active field under options and click on field settings. Another dialog box will open. Now I'm going to click in this box and change the column header to order amount dollar. Let me also point out that if you would like to view the value by count or average, min, max, standard deviation, variation, you can do that from here. But I just want to view the sum of the order amount, so I'm going to let it be. In addition to that, you can change the number format, so I'm going to click on this number format, and then I'm going to go to number, currency, in fact, and I want a dollar sign to appear before the number so I'm going to select the currency and I'm going to click OK. In case you do not want any decimal places you can select 0 and then I'm going to click OK and now click OK again. Here I have the column name changed as well as a dollar sign before each sales amount and no decimal places. In case you would like to change the look and feel of the table, you can go to the Design tab and then change the color formatting as per your convenience. If you would like to change certain other features of this table, again in the Design format, you can go to Layout and under that you can select various options such as if you want subtotals to appear. You do not want any row and column headers or if you want if you want to show it in tabular format you can do that if you want to insert a blank line after every quarter you can do that from here if you want bands to appear after row and after column you can do that from here if you do not want any row headers you can do that as well so various options are available to reformat this particular pivot table. You can also go ahead and change the font of the table by simply selecting the entire table and let's say and going to the home tab and changing it from there. In addition to that, let's say we also want to view what is the percent of total sales amount over the grand total which is this particular cell. Instead of going ahead and calculating it one by one, I can go to the Options tab under Calculations. I can click on Show Value As and then Percent of Grand Total. So this is going to change it to a percent of grand total. Various other options are also available. You can select any based on what is it that you require. You can also rank from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. But let's say I also want to be able to view total sales amount as well as the percentage. 
So let me just undo this for a bit. Okay. Now let's go ahead and click on Calculations drop down under Options and then click on Fields, Items and Sets. In that there's something called Calculated Field. Go ahead and select that. Another dialog box will open. I want to name the new field as Order Amount Percentage of grand total. I want it to equal to order amount simply. You will see why I have done that and so just simply click OK. So currently we have, so let's just close this. So we have two columns. Now go ahead and click on the new column and under calculations drop down go ahead and click on percent of grand total. As you can see now we have both the options available to us. Order amount as well as order amount as a percent of grand total. So this is what a calculated field can do. You can go ahead and subtract certain amount from the order amount or you can do any kind of calculations just by simply clicking on the calculations drop down and going to field items and sets and clicking on calculated fields. Let me also take this opportunity to introduce slicers in the pivot table. Go ahead and click on options tab and under that go to sort and filter and click on insert slicer and click on insert slicer. Another dialog box will open. Go ahead and click on country and let's say salesperson. And click OK. Two new slicers have appeared. I want to view only data from UK so I'm just going to go ahead and click on UK and you can see data has changed. Only UK data is available from here and this is also evident from the global filter or the report filter here. Let's say I want to view only King's data so I'm going to click on King. Now let's say I want to be able to view King and Sabrina's data. So I'm going to click on King and then I'm going to press Control and then I'm going to click on Sabrina. There you have both the employees data. If I would like to view other employees data, I can go ahead and select that name by pressing Control. This is how useful slicers can be. And if you would like to get rid of the filters, then you can simply click on clear filter and it'll get rid of all the filters. Hope this was useful. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at CXO